So you know at some point, almost every pilot will want to circle something on the ground safely while keeping a constant radius from it. Well, the good thing is that the FAA thinks that's a skill you should have, and they've included a maneuver in the ACS called turns around a point. It's one of the maneuvers that we practice in a category called ground reference maneuvers, and they're all based on being able to accurately control your ground track. And that's pretty easy if there's no wind, but the real fun starts when the wind requires us to adjust what we do in the air in order to maintain a specific track over the ground. And research has also shown that flying around an object at low altitude has resulted in too many accidents. And that's another reason why we practice it. We want to learn the pilot skills needed to divide our attention between aircraft control and adjusting our ground track. Another reason is that practicing these turns helps us to learn how to adjust for wind and the traffic pattern since we're basically circling around a point to land. But what seems like a very basic and simple maneuver is actually challenging to get just right. You'll be controlling the airplane in an ever-changing environment and maintaining an equal distance from a point while keeping an eye out on your airspeed, altitude, and for other traffic. So let's do some turns around a point, and we'll do these down low at 1,000 feet above the ground. The Airman Certification Standards allows us to begin the maneuver between 600 and 1,000 feet AGL. And we'll set the power to 2200 RPM, which gives us about 98 knots, which is our maneuvering speed. So now let's do our clearing turns left and right. Okay, it's all clear. So now we just need to select a point to do our turns on. And it's important that you select a point and not an area because you can't turn accurately around an area. It has to be a specific point. Could be a water tank, a building, an obvious road intersection, or even a large tree or anything that's easy to see and doesn't move. And by the way, you shouldn't use somebody's house because your constant turns at low altitude can really anger the occupants. So please keep that in mind. Okay, so today we're going to use that tree right below us. And now let's figure out what the wind is doing, where it's coming from, and about how strong. And we can use several clues here. Reports or forecasts from a local airport, the way the trees move, ripples on the water, or even flags in the area. And you'll want to start the maneuver going downwind at your chosen altitude, about a thousand feet away from your point. And that's about a wingspan, as you see it from the pilot's seat. So let's set ourselves up on that spot with 1,000 feet AGL and the wind right behind us. Okay, you can see the point on my left here, and we're headed downwind, and that means we have our fastest ground speed, because the wind is pushing us from behind. So as we come up onto our point, I'm going to roll into our steepest bank of about 30 degrees because our ground speed is the highest downwind. We're just about up on our point, and I'm gonna roll in and put my wingtip right on the point. Okay, and now I'll just fly a constant ground radius right around that point. And that sounds easy, but I'm constantly having to change my bank angle because the relative wind direction is changing as I go around. Now one tip that I can give you is to always start downwind with a bank angle of no more than 30 degrees because that makes it easier to maneuver since that'll be the maximum bank for your entire way around the point. Now here's the second tip. Look the same distance out from the point all the way around and pick landmarks that you're going to fly over. Then all you have to do is fly over those points. Now it might be cheating just a little bit, but it provides a good guide if your bank angles are working out. Okay, now we have the wind at our side, so we're crosswind, and I'll establish a little bit of crab into that wind since it's not very strong today. If the crosswind is from our left and we're turning to the left, we'll crab to the inside of the circle. If the crosswind is from our right and we're turning to the left, we'll crab a little bit to the outside of the circle. 
Now as we're coming up to the straight upwind, the wind is directly in front of us. So our ground speed will be the lowest, and that means our bank will be the shallowest. And we don't need any crab. You're just deepening and shallowing your bank as your ground speed changes with the wind. And you're working to keep that same distance from the point. The trick is you have to divide your attention between inside and outside the airplane. As you hold your altitude and airspeed by glancing at the display every once in a while, and you can see that I'm using the yoke quite a bit to make adjustments in my bank and my altitude in order to make sure that I maintain the same distance from the point. It's constant moving and adjusting. Now a great way to practice is to just keep going around and around that same point until you start to feel comfortable with it. Then level out and re-enter the maneuver from the start. Just keep practicing until you can maintain that same distance from your point all the way around and your altitude doesn't vary by more than 100 feet or your airspeed by more than 10 knots. Now there are several things to look out for on this maneuver. Now first, you don't want to fixate on the point you selected. I promise, it's not going anywhere. So be sure to divide your attention from the point to the panel to the surrounding area and then back to the point and so on. Keep your scan moving. Second, recognize that your bank angle must be constantly changing as your ground speed changes from steepest on downwind entry to shallowest on upwind at 180 degrees and then back to steepest again as you complete the circle. Now if you were to hold your bank constant, you'd be making constant turns through the air but not over the ground your circles would just be drifting downwind away from your point. Not the idea of a ground reference maneuver. So you absolutely need to vary your bank angle by watching outside, knowing where the wind is coming from, and constantly adjusting with the yoke. Now most pilots tend to overbank on the upwind side, causing them to move in toward the point. So keep those controls moving. Now another thing to watch is your coordination. Pilots get so fixed on the bank that they forget the rudder and they end up slipping or skidding around the point. So make sure you're watching what your feet are doing and keep those turns coordinated. Remember, you're too close to the ground to recover from a spin. So really focus, keep your scan going, and don't get distracted. And finally, don't forget to be a good neighbor. Pick a point that's not close to people if you can, otherwise, don't stay in one place for too long. So practicing and perfecting turns around a point is a lot of fun and it really sharpens your skills as a pilot. You'll become comfortable and confident handling the airplane at low altitude while correcting for wind. And that's a skill that'll come in handy in the traffic pattern. And if you decide you just need to take a closer look at something on the ground. So let's go try another one.